Okay, so maybe that was a little bit of a dramatic entrance, but welcome everyone to the Serial Port and to our second installment in our Mac Classic 2 series. If you haven't seen part one, definitely check that out to get the full appreciation of where the system came from to where it is now. We'll link to it in the upper right corner of this video. And if you remember, we put all the plastic through a RetroBright process and it turned out fantastic. The plastic looks more or less new now and it took away all those years of yellowing. The inside now is just as clean, especially if you remember what we had to deal with from years of grime, leaking capacitors, loads of rust, and as some of you pointed out, even a literal bug. But with all of that gone, we finally get to see the Mac as it was intended, looking as good as it did when it rolled off the assembly line all those years ago. Our first turn on of the Mac was pretty much flawless, which was definitely a relief. After we dialed in the display adjustments, we started to think about the operating system. As you can see right now, there's nothing for the system to boot from, which is why we get this blinking disk icon. There are a few options for operating system installs, but we ultimately decided on system 7.0.1. This version was released in October of 1991, right around the time the Classic 2 was released. So it seemed appropriate for the system. Plus, the experts back then really made it sound amazing. Bill, tell me about System 7. What do you want to know? All I do basically is word processing and use a spreadsheet. But why would I want to upgrade to System 7? If you have someone working on a chart and you want to pull that in, if you have someone working in number crunching and you want to pull the results of that in, you put it all into one report. Our students are isolated. Is there any way we can bring the data together? Their application communication. Speaking of bringing the data together, Is there any way we can bring the data together? We need to decide what to install the operating system on. Our system did not have a hard drive installed, which would normally be installed on top of the floppy drive here. For reliability and convenience sake, we typically opt for a flash-based system for storage instead of going with a traditional hard disk. In this case, we're using a Zulu SCSI adapter, which emulates a SCSI hard disk, and it uses a standard SD card for storage. There are loads of other options though, including the SCSI 2 SD, the Pi SCSI, which uses a Raspberry Pi, or the floppy emu, which has the added benefit of emulating the Apple floppy drive. Connecting the Zulu SCSI to the Mac is dead simple. Hook up the 50 pin SCSI cable and optionally hook up the power. I say optional because these devices can usually source power from the SCSI bus, but we'll connect power just to eliminate any possibility of an issue there. Additionally, we can enable the SW1 switch so that it is compatible with Apple computers. And for now, we'll just leave the adapter loose in the system, but we'll either 3D print a bracket or maybe convert this Zulu SCSI to an external setup instead in the future. That takes care of the hardware side of things, but we also need to prepare our SD card. For that, we simply create an empty image of 80 megabytes on the SD card, which matches the original hard drive size that shipped with the system. We're using DD and Linux to do this, and we're using a file name format that instructs the Zulu SCSI to use a SCSI device ID of zero. So the file name in this case is hd0.img. It's very simple to do, and once that's done, the SD card goes into the Zulu SCSI. With that squared away, now we need our installation method. We wanted to use floppy so that we can experience the original install process for System 7, and to make sure that our floppy drive is working reliably. We're admittedly more x86 focused here on the serial port, but luckily there are utilities available that allow us to write Mac compatible floppy disks from a PC. So we sourced system 7.0.1 floppy images, which are readily available on the internet, and then used WinImage to write them to diskettes. With that done, let's go ahead and pop the first installed diskette in and see if it works. So we jumped the gun a little bit here because as you can see, we cannot select the emulated disk on the Zulu SCSI to install the operating system on. And that's because we skipped a step. What we need to do is boot from the disk tools floppy to initialize the disk first before attempting the install. So let's boot from the disk tools floppy and then open Apple HD SC setup which will give us the option to initialize our emulated disk. And 
and we'll obviously name this volume serial port. With that done, we can partition the drive now. We found that choosing the maximum Macintosh preset wouldn't actually use all of the available space, so we're going with custom. This will be a standard Macintosh volume, and we'll type in the maximum available size. Here's the layout of the disk. We have an Apple partition map, the Mac driver, and finally our HFS partition where the operating system will be installed. With that done, we can pop the installed diskette back in, and now we can select our emulated drive as expected. Time for a fat 90s fact. Did you know that Apple was second overall among manufacturers in the PC market in 1992? That didn't last long, however, as the explosion of PC manufacturers and the release of Microsoft Windows 95 took over the marketplace during the mid 90s. It wouldn't be until the release of the iMac in 1998 that Apple would regain form and return to their previous double digit market share. Now, let's get back to our install. We've got a list of options here that allows us to install all packages or just the bare minimum. And we also have options for each type of Mac that is compatible with System 7. For this install, we'll choose a standard install for the Classic 2. No need to support other Mac models right now. And away we go. The install completed successfully, and now I think we're ready for the big moment. Let's see if we can boot into System 7. And we did it! The install went smoothly and our Macintosh Classic 2 is back up and running with System 7.0.1. From being in storage for decades in the backwoods of North Carolina, it is now in a fully restored state and hopefully ready to go on for another three decades. We've got loads more content coming up for the Classic 2, so let us know in the comments what you'd like to see. The serial port is dedicated to preserving these incredible machines from the 90s, the ultimate decade for computing. Be sure to like and subscribe to see our next installment, and thanks as always for watching The Serial Port.